shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. So, is it being treated as a cursed thing? Mm mm. In this society, they're taking that cursed thing, they're bringing it into their house. They're decorating it. They're singing songs around it. They're putting gifts under it. They're bringing the children to it, taking pictures of it. But the Lord said it's a cursed thing. And he said, if you do this thing and you bring this abomination in your house, then you're a cursed thing just like it. So what you're doing, you're not bringing a blessing upon your household like you think. You're bringing a curse upon your household. And it's going to be tenfold upon the ones that hear this word, hear this scripture, understand it, and know it. Now you're really, now you're really accountable. Now you're really accountable. So what you have to do from this point, hear the word of the Lord, repent of this wickedness, bring that cursed thing out of your house. So we're going to go from there. We're going to go to um, Romans chapter 10, verse 3, or rather verse 2. And we're going to read something there and we'll talk about the next day that our people are following and doing and praising and all these different things they're doing, spending much money on frivolous, worthless things. Romans chapter 10, verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Start at verse 1. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. So this Bible from Genesis all the way through is speaking to Israel. And here's Paul teaching, and he's speaking and praying for Israel to get their act together. Come back, follow the Heavenly Father in Christ, and obey the commandments. Go ahead. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Mm -hmm. For I bear them record... That they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Because Israel has a zeal. They have a passion. They have a love for God. You go and look in any of these churches, you'll see them going crazy, screaming his name. But it's not according to what the Bible says. It's not according to the knowledge that the scriptures say. They're going about doing it in their own way. They're going about doing it how they please, through religion, through philosophy, through their way, through what they even think. But that's not the way the scriptures tell us to have that zeal for God. If we're going to have that zeal for the Heavenly Father, then we have to have that zeal according to what the scriptures say. According to thus saith the Lord, we have to be zealous to follow Him how the Bible tells us to follow Him. Go ahead. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness... Because a lot of our people are ignorant of the commandments. They're ignorant of the law, statutes, and commandments. They're ignorant of the fact that when you read Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, how all those holy days, when you go back, are a foreshadowing of Christ. How those are the days how we truly please the Heavenly Father by following the commandments and praising Him in Christ in that manner. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So what they do instead is go about to establish their own righteousness by what? Oh, uh, they figured out, you know what, Christmas, that's not for us. We're not supposed to be celebrating that. But what do they do instead? Instead of saying, well, let's find out what we're supposed to do and go into the Bible and read and find out the days, they say, no, let's make up something new. Let's make up Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. And then they establish their own righteous there. They establish their own principles that they want to follow. Their own days, their own philosophy, their own traditions. So it's Christmas for black people. Exactly. That's why I was laughing the other day how they're trying to get away. They say that they're trying to get away from Christmas. And the radio was advertising a Kwanzaa party where Santa Claus is going to be there. That's madness. So the point being is that when you go about to establish your own righteousness, it's the same as what Christ was warning. You're going further and further away from the commandments of God so that you can establish your own traditions. Even though Kwanzaa was invented in most people's lifetime, as time goes on, it's going to go from generation to generation to generation, but people think, okay, well, that's what the Lord wants us to be doing. 
You don't read in the scriptures where the Lord said have a red, black, and green candlesticks and have different principles for every day. The principles that the Lord told us to live by are right in the scriptures. He told us to keep the fruits of the Spirit, which is right in the book of Galatians chapter 5. We're supposed to be following the fruits of the Spirit. We're not supposed to be given honor to ancestral gods. We're not supposed to be calling up the spirit of our dead grandmothers and grandfathers and things like that, thinking that they're going to give us wisdom. We're not supposed to be following after an Africanism or any of those ancestor worship religions. And the unity that we're supposed to have is unity in Christ. Unity in following that example that Christ gave us so that we're walking as he walked and becoming closer and closer to how the Heavenly Father wants us to be. But the reason why things like that were able to be made in the first place and were able to flourish is because the same mentality that our people have now is the same mentality that they had in the past when the apostles went out to teach. Go to the book of Acts chapter 17. This is the book of Acts chapter 17. And start at verse 16. Verse 16. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. When he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. So Paul is in Athens waiting to meet up with the other disciples. But his spirit is stirred up inside of him because he's looking at the city and the whole city is given to idolatry. Read. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. So he wasn't just talking about the heathen that were there or the other nations that were there, but the Jews were the ones that were caught up in this as well. The Israelites were caught up in the same idolatries that were practiced in the city of Athens. Read. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? So now here come the Stoics and the Epicureans. Notice it said that they were philosophers. So what was their philosophies? If you look up the Epicureans, even if you look it up in the dictionary, they'll say that these are people who believe that man's sole purpose in life was to seek happiness. That's the PG definition. Because when it talks about the happiness, what it was really talking about was sexual, immoral pleasures. Any pleasure under the sun that you can dabble into, the Epicureans wanted to try it out. If that meant that you wanted to have sex with a cockroach, then that means you go do it, more power to you, you have fun. Because that's how they were dealing. Then it came back to the Stoics, who were the polar opposite. They were the ones that believed in practice and restraint. When you see people that have the monks' robes on, they lock themselves in the room, eating porridge all day long, beating themselves with a stick when they think bad thoughts, that's the other end of the spectrum. But neither of which had anything to do with what the scriptures were talking about. So now Paul's in the situation where the Stoics and the Epicureans are encountering him. And the people are saying, looking at Paul, like, okay, what is this babbler going to say? Read. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Others, some, he seemeth to be a set of forth of strange gods. Because he preaches unto them Jesus and the resurrection. So, Paul was teaching about Jesus Christ and how he resurrected from the dead. And they're like, okay, well, maybe he has a new God. Read. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? So now, they're curious because they heard about Jesus Christ. But not because they wanted to follow Christ, not because they wanted to repent, and not because they wanted to learn the righteousness of God. Let's find out what their intentions were. Read. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. Read. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in...